You're watching BBC Two, and this is The Late Show with Tracy McLeod. <coughs> Tonight on The Late Show, Britain's biggest book prize. Will the NCR Book Award go to the historian, the scientist or the football fan? And Martin Carthy, England's folk survivor. To meet a true love, to meet a true love, the way did ride it. Could he announced on Thursday? Martin Carthy is one of the giants of the English folk scene, closely identified with the revival of interest in the music in the 1960s and all the subsequent advances and setbacks it's experienced since. A gifted guitarist and singer, he enjoyed a long and successful partnership with fiddler Dave Swarbrick and has briefly been a member of electric bands Steel Eye Span and the Albion Band. But he never strayed too far from his roots, and long after most of his peers have become singer-songwriters, Martin Carthy has remained committed to traditional song and the folk club circuit. The Late Show's Mark Cooper traces the career of a folk survivor. Now all of you tradesmen who travel alone, I'm asking you now where the work has all gone. Long time I've been travelling and I cannot find none. A long time of old England, in old England, very hard time. And you go to the shop and you ask for a job, they answer you back with a shaking and a nod. Ain't that enough to make someone turn out and wrong? Sing our long times of old England, in old England, very hard times. And now to conclude and to finish my song is hoping these hard times will not be here long. And soon I'll have occasion to alter my song. Sing all oh, the good times of old England, in old England, very good times. I'm singing parts of English history as seen by people, as experienced by people, by ordinary people. Yes, it's the other history, isn't it? It's the history of England as experienced through tradition rather than through the heritage industry. I regard uh, Englishness as a thing of identity rather than uh, of, of nationalism and national fervour. Um, I find that detestable. Uh, we all recognise that there is a Scottishness. We recognise that there is an Irishness. So. What's wrong? And a Welshness, beg your pardon. Um, what's wrong with an Englishness? I don't, have any, I don't have a problem with that at all. Anybody there want to sing? Stop looking somewhere else. Anybody want to sing a song? <laughs> the folk scene's got a lot of faults, but for someone like me, doing the kind of music that I do, it's about as close to the grassroots as you can possibly get. What's interested me over the years is a revival of interest in something right down at floor level. The English folk revival that inspired Martin Carthy was a post-war phenomenon, born of a largely urban fascination with the roots of an older, rural, working-class culture. Oh, 
Says she, young man, I think I feel the world go round and round. It seems to me now that it was a, that it was a question of identity. Um, in the 50s, what we had coming out of our radios and television was stuff that looked towards... didn't even get as far as America. It was the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, wasn't it? Great respect and all that, but Dickie Valentine and Lita Rosa and Dennis Lotus and all that. That was, um, that was popular music at the time, and it's... It was pretty... You know, pretty dreary stuff. <laughs> Although the English folk revival was orchestrated by middle-aged generals like Ewan McCall and Bert Lloyd, it was young singers like the Watersons, Peter Bellamy and Martin Carthy who drew a growing audience of their peers into the burgeoning folk clubs. I think the folk revival was just kind of reacting to the shock of American culture crossing the, uh, crossing the Atlantic in the, in the 50s and becoming the dominant youth culture in this country. I think a lot of people uh, looked for something perhaps a bit more permanent, a little less, uh, perhaps if you like, a little less materialistic. And I think that's what they were looking back. In some ways, I think there was an element of, the, of uh, looking for a golden age of folk that probably never, ever existed. Television was quick to pick up on the folk boom, with programmes like Degrees of Folk, recorded at British universities and colleges. So they, so they go all on a day She dressed herself in man's array With a sword and a pistol all by her side To meet a true love, to meet a true love The way did ride as she was riding over the plain, she met her true love and bid him stand. Your gold and the silver kind, sir, she said, or else this moment, or else this moment, your life I'll have. And when she robbed him all... Martin was seen as standing out from very early on. The quality, both of his voice and performance, and in particular of his, his guitar playing, came to be noted as outstanding because I mean uh, instrumentalists tended to be of a fairly um, basic type the approach was, was very um, very straight laced not very inventive and then along came Martin producing all of these wonderful um, accompaniments and of course able to to sing and make the songs live. I did intend and it was to know it, if that you were me true love or no. But if you would give me that ring, she said, I'd have pulled the trigger, I'd have pulled the trigger and I'd shot you dead. He could quite easily at certain stages of his career uh, have gone on to the rock circuit, maybe starting out doing support to big rock bands and being promoted as a star. But that would actually have destroyed the whole essence of what he plays. But Martin Carthy didn't need to cross into rock, as gradually rock crept into folk. He was briefly a member of the pioneering electric folk band, Steel Eye Span. But tell me, uh, after Banding together, why did you decide to become an electric group? Because you'd all worked completely acoustically before, you know. Um, well, the answer is really why, why not go electric? Because um, the, the way you play a song is only a means to an end, providing you're reasonably conversant with the language. You can uh, do it with whatever instruments you like. I think the electric folk movement of the late 60s and early 70s was actually a blind alley. I mean, it did for a short time get people interested in, in folk music who then went and investigated the folk clubs, but largely speaking, what they found in the folk clubs wasn't what they were getting at rock concerts, and they, they, they went away again. They didn't, they didn't really stay attracted. Carthy stayed less than a year with Steel Eye Span before resuming his solo career. He now feels that much of his 70s work was over stylized and created within a folk scene that seemed to have lost much of its sense of direction and purpose. I'd trapped myself 
um, it's a case of, it's, it's like believing your own publicity. You know, and when we cut ourselves off from the outside world and we decided to develop all on our own because everybody just uh, thought we were such a huge joke, um, unless we were being, uh, being rock and rollers, you know, we would, take, we would be taken seriously by the music press if we strapped on electric guitars and, and strutted, which is fun. I'm not knocking it. It's great fun. But it's a, it's, it takes your eye off the prize, inevitably. I think actually inevitably. From Farnham in Surrey. Dear Jim, please would it be possible for you to fix it for us to meet Steel Eye Spam? Carthy briefly rejoined Steel Eye Span in 1978, but folk rock's brief heyday was long over, and the audience that had sustained the great post-war folk boom was itself changing. To begin with, they were, they were students, and then they became teachers. <laughs> Then a lot of the 20-year-olds dropped out or grew up or got married or had babies or whatever or just got bored with it and maybe took up squash, I don't know. Um, and they stopped going. And the audience, we all started to age together. And uh, in 76, when the punks came along, the, the barricades were thrown up and nobody was allowed through the door. Billy Bragg, the Oyster Band, and later the Levellers injected new energy into the post-punk folk scene. I was 21 years when I wrote this song. I'm 22 now, but I won't be for long. People ask me, when will you grow up to be a man? But all the girls I loved at school are already pushing grams. I loved you then as I love you still. Though I put you on a pedestal, they put you on the bill. I don't feel bad about letting you go. I just feel sad about letting you know. I don't want to change the world I'm not looking for New England Just looking for another girl Despite this brief confrontational period, the heart of contemporary folk is probably to be found at the growing number of summer festivals, like this one at Sidmouth, which have replaced the clubs as the focus of the scene. Martin Carthy remains one of the stars of the folk festival circuit, seen here performing with his wife and daughter. Did you bring gold? And did you bring silver to set me free? For to save my body from the gold jail wall and the neck from the high gallows tree. I brought gold. And I brought silver to set you free. For I've not come for to see you hanging, hanging on the high gallows tree. Oh, the prick along in bush, it pricked, it pricked, oh, it pricked my heart full so. And now that I'm out of the prick along in bush, I'll never get in there anymore. The festivals offer a weekend way of life that attracts thousands of fans. But folk in the 90s does not seem to offer the broad inspiration to the English that it does for the Scottish and Irish. Third couple round the outside. Bands like Runrig and U2 have drawn on their folk traditions to inspire mass audiences, but English folk seems unable to engage so directly with the wider world. I think that, that has been a problem all along, that we were working with myth, that the folk never existed, that the dream landscape that was set up, this, this golden, drifting golden afternoons, the, the um, oh, the first day of spring on a May morning, um, is, is a wonderful idea, but it's unreal. So much of the uh, folk tradition that has survived has been Laura Ashleyized and been tidied up and been um, made acceptable to the establishment by the establishment. It's been made to look twee. No wonder people get embarrassed when they see Morris dancers. I mean, no wonder people get embarrassed when they, they think of traditional song. It's because they, they've been separated from that tradition. And it is people like the Morris dancers and people like uh, Martin Carthy who are trying to, to get back that um, joy 
and irreverence, and I have to say it, that, uh, that ribaldry that supposedly Englishness is not a part of. Martin is one of those people who, who knows the strength of what he does and is, and is partly driven by that. There's a, you watch Martin perform and there's always a, a gleam in his eye and a, a, a determination that comes out that goes through everything he plays. I, I really admire him for it. Th 30 years doing the folk club circuit is an extraordinary thing to do. Martin Carthy's work has flourished in recent years. He's teamed up again with Dave Swarbrick and tours incessantly, both at home and abroad. For him, the size of the audience is always less important than the power he continues to find in traditional song. In about 1969, I saw a song called um, Prince Heathen in a book. In there, I mean, it's in that book, uh, English, and, English and Scottish Popular Ballads. The first five years I sang that song, all I saw was red. All the time I sang that, I'd start to sing that song and, and it would, everything would turn red. I'd shut my eyes and everything was red. <laughs> and somebody actually said to me one day, came up, a, woman, a woman came up to me and she said, God, that's an amazing song, isn't it? And I said, well, yeah, I think it is actually. And she said, yeah, it's like being inside your own bloodstream. Oh, I'll lend you an old horse blanket, but to wrap him head and feet. Then she took it in her hand, so bitter she did bleed. Oh, lady, do you weep for me? Lady, tell me true. Ah, never yet, you heathen dog, and never now for you. Could you not give any better thing than a horse blanket or a sheet? To wrap and swaddle your own young son that lies in my arms asleep. It's a song about rape and control. Um, that sort of surprise, that sort of twist of the knife, is the sort of thing that you find in, in the best traditional song and it can do it in five minutes. It can do it in five minutes. A film would take its time and do the story really well in an hour and a half or two hours, and that's great. And a book will do it in a book that thick. And a song can do it in five minutes. You can sit in front of an audience and they will rip themselves, because, I mean, they are part of it. They're actually part of the narrative and they rip themselves apart in five minutes flat. Come on. <laughs> Don't tell me that's not exciting. I, I mean, that's, that's something to live for as far as I'm concerned. And you can't do that in a 10,000-seater. Mark Cooper reporting, and Martin Carthy plays Cleethorpe's Folk Festival on May the 29th, and will be on tour with a new group, the Band of Hope, from mid-June. Tomorrow on The Late Show, Paul Foote and others discuss Bad Company, the docudrama based on the Carl Bridgewater case. But from me, good night. <laughs>